Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, central venous stenosis and dialysis patients today. Oops. What's going on with this? I have no disclosures. The, the problem is a, a very intense one. Central venous stenosis is extremely common in hemodialysis patients. Uh, they can cause disability. Uh, central venous stenosis can cause inefficiency or actual inability to dialyze the patient. The, the, uh, the central venous uh, occlusive process can cause failure of the access and eventually can result in wasting of the entire lateral territory for access. The problem is that the, the, the disease is difficult to treat. It is very resistant to treatment. The incidence of recurrence is very high. And also that uh, central venous stenosis may not be evident before the AV access is actually uh, uh, created. The most common uh, scenario used to be uh, access of the subclavian vein for uh, temporary access, which had a very high uh, incidence of central venous stenosis. That practice has been virtually abandoned in most practices, but still, uh, any central venous uh, catheterization has a very high chance of causing uh, central venous stenosis. The pathophysiology uh, is uh, multiplex. You have uh, direct vein injury from the stick site, uh, perivascular throm peri uh, device thrombosis. There's an inflammatory process that gets set up. Additionally, patients with uh, AV uh, communications have uh, uh, flow dynamics that set the patient up for vascular injury in the central venous system. Uh, all of this is complicated by uremia, which increases the inflammatory process. The presentation uh, can be protein. Uh, there's many different uh, 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 possibilities. Upper or lower extremity edema is the usual thing. Of course, in our patients, most of these are upper extremity. Uh, facial edema uh, can be present, especially when the a central venous process is bilateral or if the SVC is involved. In most cases, the patient has had a prior central venous device. Uh, the incidence of central venous stenosis is extremely high when the patients have wires for pacemakers, AICD, et cetera. The interesting thing, as I mentioned before, is that the, uh, the process can be completely asymptomatic until such time as the AV access is created. Uh, additionally, patients can have prolonged bleeding after decannulation. This is actually a very common uh, uh, a call that we get in patients with uh, central venous stenosis. Low access flows can lead to inefficiency of dialysis, recirculation. Patients can complain of various uh, nonspecific neurologic things. Uh, cerebral venous hypertension is, is, is uh, not uncommon. Patients have very dramatic dilated neck, chest, breast veins, and can get disfiguring uh, access dilatations. Two examples, uh, patients left, uh, I'm going to show some, uh, some more uh, examples, but patient on the left has um, uh, uh, an anominate vein stenosis. The patient on the right has a very uh, tight uh, SVC uh, leading to these uh, dilated veins over the chest, neck is extremely swollen, dilated neck veins, et cetera. This patient uh, had a uh, anominate, left anominate vein uh, stenosis, and you can see uh, these telangiectasia type things on the chest, very swollen arm. Diagnosis uh, is not difficult. This is a extremely common thing that we deal with every day uh, with arteriovenous access. The history and physical almost always nails the diagnosis down, uh, and it's not subtle. Um, I think that the most important thing is for the clinician to pay attention to the history, uh, try to get a good sense as to what has happened in the past, because it usually leads to the diagnosis. Duplex scan, although inexpensive, uh, easy to perform and, and immediately at hand, has limited utility because uh, the portions of the subclavian vein that you may be interested are immediately sub uh, osteal and uh, not visible. Uh, we may see uh, a patent jugular vein, uh, difficult to see the anominate veins. So although, you know, there's no problem doing it, it doesn't usually lead to very much information. 
MRV is uh, available, uh, but expensive, and of course, um, in the renal failure population, difficult to use because the gadolinium uh, can be obviously toxic. But it can give you some uh, valuable information in certain cases. CT venography, uh, again, very useful, but not always possible. And additionally, if the patient needs an intervention, uh, there's going to be a separate therapeutic encounter. So in basically, direct or trans-AV fistula contrast study is almost re always required in order to get uh, uh, in order to get to the bottom of the problem. Um, in terms of treatment, we almost always treat if the patient's lesion is symptomatic. I discussed the, uh, the various indications and symptoms before. Uh, usually, uh, when we do angioplasty, high-pressure balloons uh, can be very effective and more effective uh, in cases like this. Drug-treated uh, drug balloons are uh, in therapeutic, are in trial right now and may offer some advantage in these patients. Stent, uh, primary stenting does not necessarily increase the patency of these lesions, uh, I'm sorry, of these uh, uh, therapies. And uh, if you compare stent uh, to angioplasty alone, the incidence of recurrence is pretty much the same. Uh, there is data now to indicate that covered stents may offer the best long-term patency. Looking at uh, uh, balloon angioplasty or stent, the recurrence rate is extremely high, uh, 50, 75 percent. And it's the recu it, a recurrence is the rule rather than the ex exception. I'll talk a little bit about uh, open surgery. Uh, in terms of, uh, a, a little later, in terms of endovascular treatment, again, start with an AV fistulogram, get full study of the access, uh, proximal, distal, arterial, et cetera. If a, a central a venous lesion is present, uh, a long sheath, getting it close to the lesion helps, helps get good uh, pictures pre and post. Uh, it helps to get a stiff guide wire into the IVC for good support. Heparin uh, is usually given, and uh, balloon sizes are, are given here. They're just a guideline, of course. Um, if the uh, balloon angioplasty results in recoil, usually re-balloon or stent, most times stent. Uh, rupture or extravasation can occur, obviously, and uh, these are usually treated either with a prolonged inflation or uh, a stent or a covered stent. This patient um, had uh, a no prior central venous uh, uh, manipulation, but did have an anominate vein stenosis. The patient was treated with a balloon, uh, and it was easily treated. However, uh, several weeks later, the patient presented once again with prolonged bleeding from the access, and there was a, uh, a recurrence, which you can see. Uh, the patient was redilated and stented, but the patient, again, uh, after the stent was placed, uh, uh, recurred once again. This patient had a, uh, uh, a right-sided lesion uh, treated with a stent, and within about four or five months, the patient had a recurrence. This was uh, uh, treated with a balloon. We got some recoil and then uh, uh, used a covered stent inside the stent to try to treat it. Uh, so far, we're okay. That patient's only about eight months out. Um, again, in terms of endovascular treatment, high pressure balloons need to be available. The stents should be about four centimeters or longer. Uh, avoiding balloon expandable stents is a good idea, and it's extremely important, if possible, not to jail out the cervical veins for future access. Stents need to be uh, oversized 10 to 20 percent to avoid migration. I'm going to skip that. Um, treatment of occlusion, whole different thing. Um, when patients have occlusions, uh, the stakes are a little bit higher. Um, uh, it's important to get uh, access on both sides, uh, above and below, and try to cross from below before attempting sharp recanalization. Uh, sharp recanalization is something that is uh, uh, risky in terms of hemorrhage, tamponade, perforation must be promptly treated with stents or covered stents. There are lots of tools available, uh, but 21-gauge uh, needles are uh, uh, useful. This is a case there where uh, Dr. This is Luckstein's case, where a, a patient with a severe innominate uh, stenosis was treated with sharp recanalization from below. You can see that the uh, wire uh, is 
uh, introduced through the needle, snared, uh, exchanged for stiff wire, and uh, a 10 millimeter stent was placed. And uh, this is the patient before he was utterly uh, uh, frustrated with his uh, appearance, although his dialysis access actually worked. And this is a picture that I took a couple of days ago. Uh, surgery is an option. Uh, this transjugular transposition to the axillary vein, subclavian to SVC bypass, patch angioplasty. Uh, certain groups actually decompress into the femoral vein with a long bypass and bypass to the right atrium. Thank you.